Okay, this is how you switch your port. And you kind of want to do this almost every session, unless you're going to use it like two or three days in a row because it gets stuck kind of and it's really hard to get off. But. Actually, you have to put a lot of pressure on there, as you saw, but that's how you take the port off. It's threaded. You're going to want to put a lube gel around the O-ring every time you change it. You'll see how to do that uh, later in the video. Okay, so when I did that, actually, I had the back plate taken off the housing it took, and I folded a towel up as you see right here. And you kind of put these bolts down on the towel and it grips a little bit and that's when I was putting all that pressure to get the port off the housing. And yeah, you kind of do the same thing to put the port on the housing. You gotta spin it and get it real tight on the housing. Okay, this is novice. It's a plastic polish. It's a good thing to have for if you get wax or your port gets dirty with the lube you put on the o-ring or whatnot. Also get scratches out there out of the ports pretty well I've noticed if you use the whole kit number one two and three and each one has a different technique it says on the back of the directions how to do it you have to do it with a soft clean cloth but anyways the number two is probably the best one to get if you're going to get just one out of the three and you kind of just want to put a little bit on there just going to do that smear it around, get it all on there nice and good what I do is I look for my softest cotton t-shirt it feels real good and this polish the motion you have to go in is in circles. So you kind of just go around the port like that. I do that on the inside too. You kind of want to like get like that air, like dust spray for computers if you have like little specks of anything in your port and spray them out before you do the inside and you do it the exact same way. Okay, this is the lube gel that's supplied with the housing. It comes in this container. You pretty much want to use a little bit. Just kind of smear it around. Let me get a little closer. Just a thin coat. And you can put a good coat on too, but I usually just do a thin one. This helps it seal and stuff. Okay, so I've put a nice thin coat around the whole thing, greased it up pretty well. Put the cap on. So then what you're going to do is you're going to get your port, whatever port it is. And this is the part, once it gets kind of snug, you just want to apply pressure. And turn it as far and as hard as you can until it kind of won't turn anymore. And then the port is ready to go. Pretty much. So if you're using like a 70 to 200 port or any zoom port, pretty much this is a zoom control. Spin in one direction, it zooms in. Spin in another direction, it zooms out. But basically, it goes up and down like that. So you want to pull it all the way up before you slide the camera in the housing and then once the camera's in the housing you push it down until it hits the lens and you turn it in either direction it'll zoom in and zoom out and then when you're taking the camera out of the housing you have to have it pulled all the way up I'm transporting the housing I tuck this little wire up underneath this arm so it doesn't scratch the inside of the port then when I'm ready to use it I push it down take the wire out push the control back up and both these controls should be all the way up 
slide the camera in, and then slide it down until it hits the control and works. And this right here, this arm, you control it and you can hit any of the buttons on the top of the uh, camera so you can work all those different controls. So every time you're going to take it out when you put in the housing, get the lube gel again. Apply a thin layer on the o-ring, this helps. I mean you don't have to do it every session but I usually do. This helps the o-ring's life. Doesn't helps it not crack and stuff and it helps it seal with the plastic real well. So I usually just do this. You also want to try to keep your uh, fingers away from the port at this point once you get this stuff on there. You don't want to hit the port with this because you will get spots on your port. And the way to get rid of that is lick it before you go out and get like a good amount of spit all around it and let it kind of dry while you're getting your fins on on the beach. And that usually is the best thing to get the water spots off the port. And you want to take it, put the control in there, have your settings however you want it. Pull the wire out, make sure this wire is in the middle. And this one's going to go on the side. Boom. I usually tuck the wire up. This, can, this housing has a preview control, so you need to make sure the wire doesn't get in its way. Turn it on. Always make sure you turn it on. It's the worst when you forget. Then. Get the wing nuts. You can also use hex nuts if you don't want the wing nuts, but then you gotta use a bolt driver every time you put it in and out. I kinda like wing nuts because you can do it with your fingers really fast. You don't need a tool. But the hex nuts don't stick out as far. Might be a little bit better for the 70 to 200 when you have to put your face to the eyepiece. But watch, like, see right here where it's black and then not so black, it's like gray, kinda. When you put the wing nut on, it seals black. You don't have to go much tighter than that. You watch it just clamp down and it's sealed. But I usually go corner to corner once I got them all on. I usually go around and check it once more. Check every single one to make sure I didn't forget any. But that's ready to go. Then the video control. Pretty much where this line is, you flip it right there when you're ready to record and you hit down and record. But to turn it off and on, you flip it all the way over. And if you get in there, you can see there's a little rubber piece. You just kind of nudge it, and it comes on. So you can flip from video mode back to photo. You just got to get to play with it to get used to it. That's how the video controls work. Then you have to flip it around and hit down to make it record. Pull it up, flip it around if you want to go from video mode to photo mode. This camera has a GoPro mount. It's a quick release. I usually leave a little piece of plastic on some housings. So you can mount a GoPro and shoot video while you're shooting the photos. And I have special, special nylon wing nuts and hex nuts. I like to use those better than uh, stainless, I found out, because stainless can lead to problems down the line. And yeah, that's pretty much the housing. Okay, right now I'm going to show you how to pressure test your housing in case you're on a trip or something happens, you hit the reef and you're in a remote spot and you want to figure out exactly where the housing is leaking because you can't get it in to get serviced or whatnot. This will apply with any housing. 
So you need some painter's tape, and then you want to get the wire. Kind of seal this thing as much as you can with painter's tape. Usually shorten it a little bit too. Daddy. After you have it like this, you're going to want to probably like tuck the wire up like that. You are going to want to lube your o-ring like you're taking it out normally. Like the camera was going in there and you're going to shoot. Okay, you're going to need Alka-Seltzer. Then you're going to want to... This is the sketchy part. You're going to have to put water in here. I usually fill it up to about there. You're going to take the Alka Seltzer. See where I set it? You got to be careful not to let the Alka Seltzer drop into the water at this point. Or even let the water hit it. Okay, now, like I said, have the O ring lubed. You put the uh, plate on like you're going out with your camera in there. Be really careful so the Alka-Seltzer stays dry at this point. As you notice, the O-ring's kind of loose and it gets dark, just like I was explaining earlier on how to set the housing up. Same exact process. Should be super careful not to let that Alka-Seltzer hit and keep it dry. The main thing on how to pressure test it because once it hits the water it makes gas in here and that's what creates pressure and the pressure from the inside will reveal your leak once you mix it you'll see the next step what I'm talking about Okay, at this point, you want to have a Rubbermaid storage container full of water. Then the Alka Seltzer, see it's still dry. See it in there? You're just going to kind of tilt it. I kind of tilt it so the wire stays dry. I'm going to hold it like this. At this point, you're just waiting for the Alka-Seltzer to mix thoroughly. And if there is any leaks, you'll see little air bubbles streaming out of the leak or where the housing's leaking. And it's kind of like when you fix a bicycle tube. I don't know if many of you people do that, but when you fix a bicycle tube, you kind of do the same type of deal. You put it in, you find where the little air bubbles are streaming out of then you know exactly where your leak is. You only really get that if you bash the reef where the housing gets thrown around and transport or something. Sometimes I'll tilt it like this too just to make sure the port's all good and nothing wrong with the port. The port's sealed in the port. But watch when you undo it you're gonna hear the air come out. Get close. That's pretty much how you test your housing to make sure there's no problems. You've got to concentrate and keep the wire dry as much as possible. That's why I put the tape on there in case it gets a little dab of water on it. And after you want to rinse it out with water, fresh water much as you can just hold the wire out of the way of the water I'll show you and take the port off 
let the housing dry out for a few hours or a day without the plate or the port on and spray it out with maybe a uh, computer dust on Okay, at this point you want to take the port off again. Get a, apply pressure to it on the top and spin with your hand. Probably good to do that every session, I don't, but just keep it loose. Get your towel and dry the threads. Pretty much gonna just dry out the whole housing as much as you can. Alright, you take off all the tape. It's gonna be gentle too, not to rip the wire out. Just to screw the connection up. There you go, the wire's completely dry. No water hit that. Everything's good. I'm going to leave it out for a few hours to dry. Okay, if you want to have like a dust off can or something, try to get that cleaned to make sure there's no water. And then right here, this push button, the one that controls the camera shutter. If you get really close to it, the water gets trapped right there a little bit inside of it. Just kind of spray it inside of where it pushes out to get any of the water that was trapped. Weren't you tested? Stop for a second. Okay, so grab the port you tested it with and get inside the seams right there because that's where the water gets trapped. And you don't want water in there after you seal it. So just kind of like clean it pretty well. And rub the grease off because you're gonna redo it. So, yeah, you want to get the water out of here too, and there's a little ridge. Just dry it as much as you can. Now it's time to uh, polish and clean the whole housing. At this point, just dry the plate off. I'm gonna clean and polish the housing like I showed earlier in the video. Just leave it all disassembled for a few hours to let it dry out. Just polish everything and your housing's ready to go. Okay, this is the stuff you need to bring with you on a trip to a remote place or whatnot in case you can't get a hold of some me. Just ship your housing back if you ever have a problem hitting the reef or something goes wrong. This right here, JB Quick Weld, is for like if your control comes loose or something, you can glue it back onto the metal stainless steel rod, the plastic piece or something. This right here, PC11, it's a white epoxy. You mix half and half together, read the instructions on the pack. It's for if you got like a hole in the housing, somehow you dropped it or hit the reef or someone's board hit you, etc. This is kind of the same thing. It's a putty and you do the same thing. You can pet patch holes and whatnot with it. It's a good thing to have. And some latex gloves, super glue, Alka Seltzer to pressure test your housing, and some popsicle sticks to mix these glues once you open them. Use the gloves so you don't get the glue on your hands. And that's that.